I'm Dr. Reynolds. I'm a general surgeon with the surgical clinic, and we're here today to talk about gallbladder disease and uh, gallbladder surgery. It's one of the most common operations that um, is performed in the United States, and we're here to go over um, the disease process and uh, the nature of gallbladder surgery. The liver is the biggest organ in the abdominal cavity. It's kind of shaped like this. And the liver is bigger on the right than it is on the left. It sits up next to the diaphragm on either side. So this is the patient's right, the patient's left. The liver um, does all kinds of things. It does cholesterol metabolism and drug metabolism, and you can't live without your liver. But one of the liver's most important jobs is to make a digestive juice called bile. Bile is this greenish yellow motor oil consistency substance that helps you digest and absorb fats in your diet. And every cell in the liver makes bile, and the bile trickles down out of the liver into a main right-sided and a main left-sided bile duct. And those two bile ducts come together here in the middle to form something called the common bile duct. And the gallbladder is a little storage sac that sits right here up underneath the right lobe of the liver. It's kind of shaped like this, and it has a little duct that comes out of it that comes over here and meets up with the main bile duct. And the main bile duct comes all the way down like this, and eventually it meets up with the pancreatic duct. And the pancreatic duct and the main bile duct come together to form this common channel that dumps into the first part of your small intestine right here, which is called the duodenum. And I haven't drawn your stomach, but your stomach sits on top of this. And you eat and food goes down and uh, dumps into your stomach. And then your stomach turns up your food with a bunch of acid and dumps it into the first part of the small intestine. So we have the pancreas here, we have the gallbladder here, and we have the common bile duct here. So the way things normally work is your liver makes the bile, the bile trickles down into the bile duct, it backs up into the gallbladder, which is a bile storage sac. That's its job. You eat something that requires bile for digestion, usually it's fats in your diet, your gallbladder squeezes, pushes the bile down here into your main bile duct and it mixes together with pancreatic digestive enzymes that are made by the pancreas. And the bile from the bile duct and the pancreatic enzymes from the pancreas all mix together with your food right there in your intestine to help you digest and absorb nutrients on down the line in your small bowel. So that's the lay of the land. That's the way things normally work. Well, because the gallbladder is a storage sac, and for reasons related to the chemistry of the bile, it's really common for folks to form stones in their gallbladder. And these are just little cholesterol salt rocks that precipitate out of solution. And these things are very, very, very common. Lots of people have gallstones. And there's a lot of people that don't have a gallbladder because their gallbladder gave them trouble and they needed to have it removed. When you have gallstones, there's several different kind of problems that you can have. The most common thing you see is something called symptomatic stones or what's known as biliary colic or what's known <clears throat> as a gallbladder attack. And this is where you eat something greasy or fatty or fried or spicy or any kind of good heavy food, your gallbladder squeezes and against those hard stones um, and you know it causes this terrible right upper quadrant epigastric abdominal pain that radiates around your back and your right shoulder. It makes you feel nauseated and bloated and sometimes you throw up bile. And that's sort of the classic history of a gallbladder attack. Um, so <clears throat> this is the way most people show up with it. Another common problem that you can have is you can have something called acute or chronic inflammation of the gallbladder, or what's known as cholecystitis. And this is where um, you actually get a stone that gets impacted into the neck of the gallbladder like that. Then the gallbladder can't empty, and it becomes big and tense and distended and hot and hits you with terrible pain that doesn't go away, and you land in the emergency room. Um, and most folks who have symptomatic stones will have some you know, element of chronic inflammation of the gallbladder. Another thing that can happen when you have gallstones is you can get stones in your common bile duct. And the doctor word for that is cholecystitis. But this is where a stone will slip out of the gallbladder and get stuck down here in the main part of the bile duct. And if that happens, the bile outflow from your liver gets backed up into your bloodstream and you start turning yellow or you get jaundiced. And you can develop a, a really complicated infection called cholangitis. <clears throat> If that happens, you end up in the hospital. Other things that can happen with stones is you can get what's called gallstone pancreatitis. And this is where you have stones that get all the way down to the bottom of this little tapered bile duct 
and they block the outlet of the pancreas and the pancreas gets backed up and inflamed and you get pancreatitis. And that can make you very ill and that usually results in hospitalization as well. So if you have stones in your gallbladder um, and we have any inkling that they're giving you trouble, it's a good idea to have your gallbladder removed. There's also um, gallbladder disease that can exist in the absence of stones, which we call acalculus cholecystitis. That is possible. And there's another disease process that's very similar to biliary colic called biliary dyskinesia, which is where the gallbladder does not squeeze appropriately. And this can all also cause these sorts of symptoms and be an indication for gallbladder removal. <clears throat> so to take your gallbladder out, what we do, it's elective outpatient surgery. This is your abdomen and your rib cage on either side and your belly button. You go to sleep, you have general anesthesia. We make a little needle poke hole in the left upper quadrant of your abdomen, blow your belly up with air. Make an incision above your belly button. That's usually a 12 millimeter hole. Um, another hole here in the upper midline that is usually a 12 millimeter hole or a five millimeter hole. And then two little five millimeter holes here and here. And we'll place a TV camera through this incision, instrument in my right hand, my left hand, and my assistant. And we go in and we dissect out this little duct, which is called the cystic duct. We put two clips on this side, one clip on this side, and we cut in the middle with a pair of scissors. We put your gallbladder into a laparoscopic retrieval bag, and we pull it out through this incision right above your belly button. It's a very safe, very commonly performed operation. It's the single most common operation that I do in my practice. Um, it's one of the most commonly performed surgeries in the United States. It's a very safe operation. Having said that, nothing we do is risk-free. When it comes to removing the gallbladder, um, the complication that is most dreaded um, that uh, you know most surgeons are concerned about is injury to the common bile duct common bile duct injury injury to this main structure right here in the middle fortunately that's exceedingly rare uh, we think that in the United States the risk of having a common duct injury when having your gallbladder removed is on the order of 0.4 to 0.6 percent in the surgical literature um, if that were to happen to you, it can be a very complicated uh, situation. You can need more extensive surgery. Um, you know, you can even need a liver transplant. I don't tell you that to scare you. I tell you that because it's something you need to be aware of if you're going to provide consent to have your gallbladder removed. Having said that, it's very rare, um, and I wouldn't lose any sleep over that. Bleeding. Anytime you do surgery, there are risks of bleeding. There are risks of infection. There's a risk of damage to other surrounding structures, such as the intestine or the um, stomach, the liver. <clears throat> There's a risk of retained stones in the bile duct down here. So if you have an ultrasound to evaluate your gallbladder and your bile ducts are not dilated, bilirubin and your liver function tests are normal on your blood work and you're not jaundiced, then the risk of you having a retained common duct stone is very low. It's on the order of like maybe 5% or less. And so in those situations, uh, we usually take your gallbladder out and we don't worry too much about it. If you were to um, have any abnormalities of your liver function tests or if we have any suspicion that there may be a stone in here, um, we do something called a cholangiogram at the time of surgery, which means before we clip and cut this duct right here, we actually stick a needle into this duct and shoot dye into the biliary tree and we take an x-ray picture on, while you're asleep on the operating room table to see if you have any stones trapped in here. If you have any stones trapped in your bile duct, uh, we do not go after them at the time of surgery to get them out. Um, we go ahead and finish taking your gallbladder out and you will need to be admitted to the hospital and a gastroenterologist will perform a procedure called an ERCP, which stands for endoscopic, meaning through the scope, retrograde cholangiopancreatography. Cholangio means bile duct and pancreatography. So they actually go in with a scope, they go into this part of your intestine, just beyond your stomach, they make a little cut right here and they fish the stones out from down below. So you just need to be aware that if we were to figure out for some reason that you had retained common duct stones, or if we thought preoperatively that you had retained common duct stones, we would need to do an ERCP, a separate procedure to get those out. The bio leak. Anytime you go in to take the gallbladder out, even though we put two nice clips across this duct right here, there is always a potential risk of developing a stump leak from this cystic duct. If that were to happen, um, you know, it, you get sick, uh, we have to stick a drain in it from the outside, and then we do the ERCP procedure, and we put a stent up in your bile duct that allows the bile to take the path of least resistance into the intestine and allows the leak to dry up. 
that's a very uncommon complication. Um, you know, something that happens once or twice a year. Um, usually, uh, this happens when you have someone with very, uh, very inflamed gallbladder with perhaps necrosis of the cystic duct, and you're putting clips across something that's rotten. So it doesn't terribly, it isn't terribly surprising that it leaks. And it's usually something that we anticipate we're gonna have that problem based upon what we find at the time of surgery, and we stent it and we drain it, and um, we move forward. Um, if that were to happen, uh, it's something that could uh, you know, slow down your recovery, uh, but it's a pretty uncommon complication. Diarrhea. When you have your gallbladder out, it's like rebooting a computer, and your system has to get used to you not having a gallbladder anymore. And so, you know, your liver still makes bile, it still goes into your intestine, or into your bile duct and into your intestine, um, but you just don't have a storage reservoir anymore. So for a period of time, while you adjust, um, you can experience some diarrhea. It has to do with fat absorption in your intestines. Um, good news is it goes away in a few weeks, and there are medications we can give you to control it if it's a real problem. Last but not least, open surgery. If we go in to take your gallbladder out laparoscopically through the small incisions, if it's not safe to do it that way, if it's terribly inflamed, if the anatomy is uh, aberrant, um, you know, if it's not safe to do it with a minimally invasive approach, uh, we have to open you to do it, which means we uh, connect these incisions and we take your gallbladder out the old-fashioned way through um, a right upper quadrant incision. We don't make any apologies for doing this if this is what it takes to get the operation done safely and done well, um, because we would rather you be in the hospital a couple of days and have a scar on your belly than have a common duct injury. So we do what we gotta do to get the operation done safely. Um, but by and large, uh, we're pretty good at getting it out laparoscopically and uh, you know, the, the risk of needing to be opened is probably less than 5% in the elective setting. So, um, the long story short, I tell you about all these potential risks of gallbladder surgery, um, but the reality of it is most of the time it's an elective outpatient operation. You come in, you have it done, you go home the same day, and you move on with your life, and I see you back in about a month, and usually you're doing pretty good.